This is our Forex blog for May 29th, 2012, and we have released on Friday our new version, 4.276, which has the amazing ability of using placeholder charts, which as I move this uh, currency meter right here, you can see there's a blank black chart here with the color red, which is set to show the first symbol in the uh, quote sheet I have and I have it set to chart group option A which links this black placeholder chart to the one that gets put on top of it and by making them all red like this when I sort the currency meter it will automatically show the, the currencies from strongest to weakest or weakest to strongest so you can see the yen is the strongest and the dollar then the New Zealand CAD the euro is going down against every other currency today the Swiss against every other one except probably the euro which is weaker than the Swiss and so by sorting it like this you can use our currency meter now and automatically find the best pairs the yen is the strongest then the dollar then the New Zealand uh, and the real-time histogram shows the yen versus every other pair using five of our best statistical tools three of them measure the direction percentage of yen pairs going up or down on various uh, using various statistical models and two of them measure the intensity. So anytime you have extreme strength like this, uh, followed by a pullback with less weakness and strength, uh, it's very likely to continue up. It's, you know, you can see that throughout the day. A lot of strength there, very little weakness. The strength came back. The weakness is less than the strength. Strength, less weakness. Uh, same thing with the, um, the dollar. Strength, very little weakness. Strength, very little weakness. You know, unfortunately here the, there's a little bit of a weakness. It's not as clear what the trend direction is, but you can clearly see that with the euro, extreme weakness, very little strength, extreme weakness. So underneath the real time, we have the trend on the 15 minute, hourly, daily, weekly, monthly. When all the time frames line up, like the euro, it's pretty much a no-brainer that that trend's very likely to go down and very likely to go down a lot. So you want to trade the weak euro, let's just say after 9.30 here, against uh, the euro, I'm sorry, the yen, the dollar, and the New Zealand. So let's take a look at that. We'll start with the uh, euro dollar and these are some range charts that show our uh, signals. Uh, trend signals show up with circles and I'm sorry, uh, counter trend signals show up as circles. Trend uh, signals show up as uh, triangles and you want to use the real-time momentum. If you see it go up with a lot of strength and pull back with very little weakness, you're looking to buy. Above the hourly, it's more likely to go up. Underneath the hourly, it's more likely to go down. If you see this sell signal right here and it's kind of going sideways, you're waiting for it to break down underneath these bars low. You have the previous day's low right here, which is a major support area. It found support earlier and had a false breakout. So when you get this sell signal, you really want it to break down here, and it doesn't. It didn't at that time. It rallied up above the hourly here with almost no strength, and as it's going sideways right here, other euro pairs are actually losing their strength pretty rapidly. The daily trends down, the weekly trends down, the monthly trends down. So when you get a bunch of sell signals and it doesn't initially break down right here to cause you to go in, when it's going sideways and you see the strength lowering and lowering, when it breaks down, you really might want to go short right here, anticipating a break underneath the low. And if it doesn't, you, you know, you can always get out of the trade there. And if it does, you get into the trade sometimes 10 pips, 5 to 10 pips earlier. Here's another counter trend signal. We're right at the previous week's low. We're not quite underneath the white containment band, which most of the time is the end of the move. So with these sell signals right here, if you do sell the 2500 and it breaks down, the next you know, likely area where it's going to go to is 77. Are you going to risk 6 to 10 pips to make 23 pips? Yes. Especially when the real-time momentum is down, the daily trends down, the weekly trends down, the monthly trends down. It's one of the weakest trends on the 15. It's one of the weakest trends on the hourly. It's a no-brainer. And not only does our, you know, intelligently designed trailing stop uh, do a good job of catching uh, most of the move, this trailing stop, which only works on live charts, that's why I leave it running each night, uh, is based on the same build your own trend tools. It's using the real-time momentum. If the momentum is strong, uh, or in this case weak, then it has a wider stop. As soon as the momentum slows down, it tightens the stop. As soon as the market moves statistically too far, it also tightens the stop. You also want to draw your fibs on the previous wave, and that is a very good place to get out of the, the trade there, right near the first and second fib target. 
So if you were trading this after 9.30, even if you took a trade right here and you lost 8 pips, you shorted it again right here at 30, uh, and the trailing stop got you out here at 80. You made 50 pips. You lose 10, you know, you wouldn't have lost 10. You would have lost maybe 8, 6 to 8. Uh, and really, if you were looking at the support level the previous day's low, you might have waited for that. It had a false breakout above the hourly, which when currencies break above the hourly, typically they go up at least 10, 15 pips. When they don't, it's a false breakout. And false breakouts, when it returns into the direction of the trend, which is clearly down, uh, you have um, you know, a huge odds of the trade working, and in this case, a 50-pip move. Now, if you missed that first trade right there and you shorted it when it broke down underneath 2,500, you're out at 78 here, you made 22 pips. 10 pips a day doubles your account every two months. Uh, 10 pips a day is 50 pips a week, 200 pips a month. You need 400 pips to double your account. Uh, it just breaks down to 10 pips a day. So this trade in this currency right here is an entire week's worth of profit. Let's take a look at the Euro Yen, which is another one that we wanted to sell. It's also kind of going sideways right here, right above the hourly. Most of the sell signals are the ones you want to focus on because all the time frames are down. Daily trends down to weekly and monthly. It's kind of hovering right around the hourly. And anytime you start trading, you see the market hovering, and it's not able to, to take out lows. Really, you, want, you might want to wait for it to go below this low here. Now, if it does go below that low here, we have a weekly pivot level and the previous day's low, which also acted as support. So you might want to wait for that 99.50 level to get taken out. But if you did short right here, you can see it kind of went your way. And if you got out with a trailing stop right here, you lost, you know, three or four pips. You got another sell signal right here. You really want to wait for it to go underneath those lows and preferably here. Uh, we have a false breakout above the hourly right here with almost no strength. And, you know, because this is one of the weakest ones using the currency meter and the yen is one of the stronger ones, I would have personally sold it right here when it broke underneath the hourly. And you really want to wait and see if it can break out this level. If it goes down here and goes sideways, you exit with, you know, 8 to 15 pips. If it shoots through here, notice our trailing stop got you out down here at 13. Short at 66, out at 13, you made over 50 pips. Now, what if you miss that first move? Or what if you were afraid to sell right here? Um, well, here's the counter trend, or here's a, a sell signal based on our range bar charting. Because this is so extremely weak, uh, a two-bar up move followed by a wick at the top is a good reversal signal. You would enter this yellow signal right here when it simply breaks underneath this bar. Your stop is one bar, which is five pips per bar, plus one or two pips padding. So you're risking less than 10 pips. You already know where your first profit target is. If it hits that area and stalls, you want to get out of half. So in this case, it's shot right through there. You would want to wait and see how the lower containment band or the 1.618 works. I would have, when it went to the white band and went underneath it and came back up, I would have probably got out of half of it at 09, and then the other half right here at 14. So the average exit, would let's just round down to 11. You're short at 30 out of 11, you made 19 pips. Again, that's almost two days' worth of uh, profit on uh, this trade right here. So let's go look at, at the currency meter again. You can see that the New Zealand is also up on all time frames except the monthly. Trends start in real time, and then the 15-minute trend changes, and then the hourly, then the daily, then the weekly, then the monthly. So, you know, a lot of times the monthly can take a week, a week and a half, sometimes two weeks of it going up before the monthly trend changes. If you're an intraday trader and you're only looking to get uh, 10 to 50 pip moves, it doesn't really matter what the monthly trend is. So as far as I'm concerned personally, this is pretty much all the time frames are up. If the monthly is up also, I might trade a little bit more lot size, but this is a phenomenal one to, to be looking at right here. And let's bring up a, a, a chart of this. The Euro New Zealand, I'm going to put two days on here, 5 pips per bar, 5R. This brings up a range chart. And let me just put this on layer 3, which is one of the visible layers right here. Okay, so this is one of the currencies we want to look for sales in, and we're going to add our uh, signals here. For new traders, this, these are invaluable because there's about 16 different chart patterns based on range charts, which are very, very uh, predictable in terms of continuation trends or counter trends. When the currency meter is showing you that the euro is the weakest and the New Zealand is one of the strongest, 
uh, it's pretty much a no-brainer. So put these signals on here, FX trade signals. Right here, FX trade signals, add script. It's going to take it a while to calculate. Uh, it uses a lot of different data sets. All right, so you can see you're looking for cells in this. So this one came down, and actually I'm going to make it a little bigger uh, so we can see any possible signals that are above the chart here. We'll add a little bit of padding, 10% to the top and bottom, which will allow us to see any uh, additional signals if there are any, which it doesn't appear that there were earlier. Okay, so really after 9.30, the euro was super weak. It came down, we got some sell signals right here. These are trend signals. Uh, you would have waited for it to break down underneath the low. And not every trade is gonna work. Uh, the key to trading is small losses, big wins. So when this broke down right here and you have a bunch of uh, sell signals and the market's not able to go lower you move your stop down I would have probably put it right here and unfortunately we would have got stopped out right here you got another sell signal put your stop above uh, or you enter when it goes one pip underneath here your stop is above the high and this went our way then double backed against us and then came back down when that happens you always want to move your stop down I would have put it right above these little uh, three bars right here is high and you always want to know where the next fib target is if it goes to the first 1.382 fib target and stalls there you want to get out of half and use the trailing stop on the other half when it does shoot through the first fib target usually the 1.618 is the end of the move so I would have exited this whole trade right here at 64.12 and I would have missed a few extra pips but if I use my trailing stop more than likely it would have got triggered right here and I would have had the same price anyway so it doesn't matter most of the time that's what's going to happen uh, short at 55 out at 11 that's a 40 pip profit now anytime you have a move down like this it's always best to to draw your fibs on the entire move uh, it's it's usually safer to wait for a 38 to 50 percent pullback before you look for a, a re-entry into a trend once it moves a lot so you might decide to pass on signals like this, or because it is a riskier trade, just have a bit of common sense. If you short here and you have your stop above the bar's high, if it goes down and goes sideways like that, move your stop in half. So you lose four or five pips. And then, you know, it comes up to the high right here. Be really careful. You're short again right there, and it comes down and it's not able to even come down to the low right here. You exit with, you know, maybe eight or nine pips. Obviously, you're not going to take this trade right here. Wait for a deeper pullback. Draw your trend lines underneath those bars low. And, you know, you have a chance to make uh, five or six pips or break even there. And this is a much better trade. This is what you want, a 50% pullback. Usually, the weakest currencies uh, will retrace 50%. That's usually the max. You can put your, you know, you can also enter it again at the 62% level if it does. And put your stop a few pips, five or six pips over the high. Now, as it's going down... You know, tighten your stop. Obviously, once it starts going your way, you don't want to re-enter there uh, at the 62. It starts going down a little bit. And most of the time, markets will make at least a two-wave move. So this is the first wave. The 1.382 of that first move is a good place to get out at 20. You're short at 50. It's another 30 pip win. Now, it could continue down farther, but most of the time, these areas are going to work. And you also have the retracement level of that up move. Usually the 50 or 62% level is a great place to get out. 64, 26, you're short around 50, you made 32 pips, 33 pips, I'm sorry, 22, 23 pips. Again, two days worth of minimum profit in one trade, just by being a little patient and waiting for a better, higher odds, higher probability trade. Trading is easy. Small losses, big wins is the only secret. Use a currency meter to find and identify the currencies most likely to trend, and then trade with those trends. Now, another thing you can do, which I've left uh, another uh, version running, you can set some placeholder charts to uh, another quote cool sheet, which has the entire pairs on there, and they're automatically going to flip and be over top of these blank placeholder charts. This one gets set to place set hotless rank option one, which means it puts the first symbol here in there. This one puts the second symbol in there, third and fourth. And obviously, it's going to resize the charts automatically. Uh, I think I have these on layer 20. These are how tiny they are. And once you hide that layer, they automatically snap on top of the charts in the order that I want them. If I sort this from 
weakest to strongest or strongest to weakest, you have the charts up there. Dollar Swiss, Australian dollar, pound dollar, euro dollar. This is the strongest one to look for buys. These are the two weakest ones. You would have taken that trade here and made probably 20 or 40 pips. Shorted again here and made 20 or 30 pips. And this is how you use our uh, tools to find the strongest ones to buy, the weakest ones to sell. And I only have four charts on here because I did a video over the weekend to show people how to set up this. Watch the new videos on our website under the uh, Forex videos section. It's on the top right-hand side of our leveragefx.com site.